Okay, we are recording it for those who can't make it this afternoon. today is letters and sounds um, and phonics and your children will have a session of phonics every day when they come to school so it's a really really important part of um, their learning in early years and um, phonics does go all the way up to year one whereas at the end of year one they have a phonics screening um, assessment that takes place in year one so everything that we do that starts from nursery all the way up to year one um, is to get them ready for that level of assessment at the end of year one um, so just click on back if you So what are phonics? It's the connection um, between the visual, which is the letter, and the sound that that letter makes. Um, and it's, it's early reading and early writing skill. Um, in nursery, in autumn, once the children are settled, of course, um, Mrs. Jervis will start them on phase one, which is very much listening, um, making sounds, identifying sounds. Um, and then in summer two, Mrs. Jones will move them into the beginning of phase two, um, and that's the skills, that's the blending, the segmenting, and the recognising some of the sounds. Um, and then in reception, there's a little bit of an overlap because we just have to make sure that things that they learned before summer have been retained. So we do start again in the autumn with phase two, where the children need to be. So we assess them, and then we carry on from that point. Um, and then by the end of reception, um, we hope that every child is working on phase three, which is um, two letters making one sound and three letters making one sound. So the trigraphs and digraphs we call them. So I'll hand over to Mrs. Jervis, who knows a lot more than about phase one than I do. Okay, so um, your phase one sounds that we teach in nursery, which we will be starting mostly kind of towards half term, after half term. Again, like Miss Lee says, it's a lot of tuning into those sounds, listening and really focusing on what sounds we can hear, so loud sounds, quiet sounds. So there's just some examples here. So we've got seven aspects um, in our phase one phonics, um, which are environmental sounds to begin with. So um, when we say environmental sounds, we're talking about what sounds can we hear outside? Oh, what's that noise? It's a lawnmower. Oh, what's that noise? It's a car horn. Oh, what can we hear? We can hear a dog barking. So it's hearing those sounds out and about, it's hearing a hoover, you know, the ping of a microwave. It's tuning in to all those different kind of pitch sounds that we can hear. Um, and then we've also got musical instruments on there. So can we make some kind of loud sounds? Make quiet sounds. And it's getting them to understand what's a loud sound, what's a quiet, quiet sound, what's a quick sound, and what's a, a stretchy sound, what's a fast sound, because that progresses into when you pronouncing your phase two sounds like your s, ah, ah, ah. you can hear them going ah, 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 or you've got s, yeah so it's getting them to understand those sounds and musical instruments as well um, now some ideas that you could use at home for that um, because obviously we're aware that you know you might not have kind of tambourines kicking around in your house um, so there's lots of other ways you can use just pans uh, with wooden spoons tapping let's make a loud sound slow sound so you can use kind of resources at home with that as well. Um, we love our ears, we love our ears <laughs> um, for going on listening walks around again for the environmental sound birds you can hear so the children do enjoy putting these on and it just you know tunes them into what we're using our ears for. Um, again we've got um, a poster here um, that helps the children to understand what those long sounds are. So, oh, what noise is that? Does the cow make moo? That's a really long sound. Oh, what's that? It's a clock. Tick tock, tick tock. That's a fast, bouncy sound. Um, so they are quite easy to make at home. You can just cut kind of out magazines um, for support there. Um, you, we also do in the aspect of rhyming books and finishing off nursery rhymes. So that's kind of your voice sounds and your rhyme sounds. So lots of books like The Gingerbread Man. Um, it goes as far as books, I can't emphasise books enough for listening because it really engages the children to understand what listening means as well. Um, so what we, what we like to do with the children is we'll read the story, run, run as fast as you, 
and we want them to say can, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. So can, man gets them understanding that rhyme as well, as well as joining in with kind of the book and that goes alongside singing your nursery rhymes. Singing is fabulous as well for early phonics, um, so you want the children again singing independently, you know, nurse familiar rhymes that they know like Twinkle Star, but again missing out that Twinkle Twinkle Little and get them to say Star How I Wonder What You Are, it gets them to hear those familiar words. There's loads of books as you know going on about Hunt Room on the Broom, Julia Donaldson, I just love Julia Donaldson. Um, and then um, to go along with the rhyme, this is one that we've made, we're going to make a buffalo crumble and make it nice and hot. Let us look at the ingredients and see what we have got. In goes ah, and then we've got like cat, so you put cat in and you mix it up. In, obviously in class we'd have a circle of children and they'd pass it round. So you say the rhyme again, you've got cat, in goes ah, rat, mix it up, in goes ah, dog. Oh, what's wrong there? So again, those are games that you can just play at home, you can make up your own rhyme, you can just kind of find a bowl and a spoon, things that, you know, rhyme that you can put in there. Um, so those are the five key aspects that we could miss it. Oh, body percussion, yeah, that was another one, I've been doing that today. So, um, kind of, that's a quiet sound, that's a loud sound, copying the sound so they can hear again. So as you can see, there's a picture, it's just understanding those quiet sounds, loud sounds, um, fast sounds, stretchy sounds um, and then that moves us on to phase two um, which is obviously recognising the individual sounds um, which takes us through into reception um, for, for those as well and we stretch we we have a big big focus kind of end of spring summer on I spy my little eye something beginning with birth so um, before back to before box so any any games like that you know, even when you're just driving in the car, oh, what can we see? We can see a, you know, toad, or we can see a frog, or anything. Just hearing those first sounds and emphasising those sounds is, is a really good practice as well. Um, and then we move on to obviously the segmenting, blending, but I'll let Miss Lee tell you about that. Because that we do we do that at the end, and you'll see us walking around the parents that had me last year, obviously, video calling and everything, robot arms. <laughs> with my hat on. Um, so yeah, that's just breaking the words down to hear them individual sounds, but I'll let, I'll let Miss Lee say that. Okay, yeah. Or well, Mrs Becky, one or the yeah. other. Moving on from what Mrs Jervis was just saying, it's really important that when they hit us in reception, that they are familiar with the letter sounds. So they're good listeners, and they are starting to recognise and hear the sounds that letters make. So we do a lot of work to start with on just we use jolly phonics for actions because we, we find that they remember things best through an action. So we will, then we start to move away from action so they just see the letter. So we've got lots of things here with just letters on to start with. So again, like Mrs Jervie says, we might be saying, Ooh, can you find me the s? And we're hoping that they're going to pick up the letter. So here I've got little plant pots with, I've just written the, the letters on. We've got the magnetic letters. Um, puzzles are good to make a puzzle, especially a picture puzzle, and to say to them, ooh, I can see something that starts with mmm. Can you find something that starts with mmm? And they start to obviously point out then the initial sounds as well for things. I've got letters on cars. Can you find me the car, or you know, run the car that's got the i on it? I've got pegs that I've just written letters on as well. So we've got all sorts of bits and pieces. We'll come on to those in a minute. And of course our metal mic, which we'll talk about as well. So it's really important that when we're teaching the letter sounds, that we, we call them pure sounds. And what, what we find is that sometimes the children, it's a little bit of laziness sometimes as well, that they hear a shl, and they put that on the ends of letters. So t or m becomes, and they get that u at the end. So that when they sound trying to sound things out, they'll go s at t or they'll put u's on the ends of things, and it doesn't sound right, and it's very difficult then for them to spot and write the sounds that they need. So we talk about pure sounds, and if you use apps like Jolly Phonics 
um, Mr. Thorne does phonics. You can watch those. If you're not sure if you're saying the sound right, then just have a look at something like that and it will just be aware that we don't like the Americanized versions <laughs> and there are many of them about. So there's a video um, on my nursery web page. Yeah, this is Jervis's web, uh, your page on the school website. It's got I did it last year, just pronounced each sound yeah, so you some can see what sound so that you can see that. Within phase two as well then, we come on to something that's called segmenting and blending. And to be able to read and write, you've got to be able to segment and blend. So we're looking at lots of little picture cards. So we might have picture cards around the room and we might say to them, oh, we might give them a choice of two to start with. And we might become a robot, like Mrs. Jervis says, and we might go, oh, can you find me the d o g? Listen again, d o g. And we're hoping that they're going to pick up the right picture to match the sounds. And if it's right, they post it through Metal Mike. Okay. And then we start to think about, oh, right, so what do those sounds look like to write? Can you find me the letters? So we might be doing a lot more of the magnetic letter type work. And we might be saying, oh, can you find me the d for dog? Listen again, what was next? And that sequencing is really important for us. So it's hearing that first sound, that middle sound, and that end sound. So can you find me the d? Can you find me the o? Oh, can you find me the g? Can you put them in the right order for me? Because a lot of children just get them randomly to start with, that's fine. But then we're saying to them, right, what did you hear first? What was your first sound? Can you put that one first then? And that's quite important. And what I do, we do a lot of what we call sound buttons. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually make the three, I'll make three little dots and say, right, one sound for each dot. So what was the first sound? And we'll put that on the first dot. What did you hear next? And what was the last sound? It's often the last sound that gets lost because they've stopped listening. They've heard the d, they hear the o, oh, and then they're so eager to make the word dog that they've forgotten to listen to the last sound. And we quite often will say, don't touch anything, listen until we've finished. Wait till we've finished before you start so that they, they hear all three sounds. Lots of children at this stage right back to front. So I get that quite a lot sometimes as well when they're making words. And that's just a simple correction. Oh, what was the first sound? Does that look right? There, there's the first one, Luke. Was that the first sound you heard? Ah, sometimes we'll put a little cross for them to say this is where you start. So let's go back. Oh, okay. Let's change those round. Okay, so we do lots, lots and lots of work. The peg, pegs are good as well, because it also gets that motor control going. We've got to be able to pinch those together. And again, can you make me, can you, you know, find a picture, or can you put the pegs in the right place to make me the word cat? Or you can even, I'll just put that back on, put those two back on. What was the middle sound? So you can play games around, oh, the middle sound's missing. What was the middle sound? Let's sound it out together and we do all the robot talk. Can you pick the peg with the right middle sound? And we can do that with any of them. First sound might be missing, last sound might be missing. If you've got anything like this at home, Duplo or anything like this, what we've done is Again, if you hear the terminology CVC, which we do use a lot, it, all it means is consonant, vowel, consonant. So if you hear CVC, we're making CVC words, that's what it means. It's three, it's three sounds with the vowel in the middle. So we might just be copying this one, but we'll get them to sound it out first. Can you sound out? Let's do it together. We always model, we always do lots and lots of work together before we ask them to go and do it then independently. Um, so can you find me the, the, the same as I've got? And that's just making sure that they're picking up the right ones and they then put them in the right place. Okay, and if they mix them up, let's go, oh, let's go over that again. What was the first sound we heard? So there's lots and lots of games, isn't there, that we play in, in the classroom. 
we all started to write, but tonight, today isn't about writing, it, it's more about the phonics, it's more about the listening uh, and making words so that we can move them on to reading because reading comes before writing so we've got to make sure that they can read the CVC words and they know they've got to be familiar with each phoneme they've got to be you know because if they're not confident and don't know these they're not going to be able to sound a word out and we so don't, we don't in nursery want to move them on to reading books very fast because the bread and butter in nursery is that listening so if you think well you know they haven't come in with a reading book there's, there will be reasons behind that you know we want them to have a good bulk of the first s-a-t-p-i-n to recognize all of them be able to hear the initial sounds, be able for me to say, can you find me up? It, mm, you know, that has got to be completely secure before we will give them a reading book. So don't panic if your child, you know, comes towards the end of the nursery and they haven't got a book with words, that's okay. You know, we are, we'll go at each child's level and we really embed all of this and then that supports them moving to reception with that progress quicker. Another really important thing that you, just to make sure that your children know, especially when we're looking at the um, making of CVC words, is making sure that they understand that positional language, that they know what first, middle and last means. Because sometimes when we're asking them, if they haven't got that concept, they're never going to get what we're asking them. So just make sure that you're working on that with them as well. We use words sometimes like initial sound, first sound for the first one, middle sound, final or last sound. So just, just check, it's always something that we, we do sometimes just say, oh, do they know what that means? Uh, so just make sure your child knows what that means. It's really, really useful for when we're asking them those questions. And uh, the segmenting comes hand in hand with the blending. The segmenting is what Mrs. Beckett was doing when she was breaking down that CVC word into single sounds. So I'm doing this all the time. Yeah. So um, when you say to your child, at, you're segmenting, you're breaking that word down there. Um, that we do expect the children, because that's an early spelling skill, to be able to blend and segment as well. Uh, both very, very important. The blending is more, more linked to the reading, but the segmenting is massively linked to the writing as well. Um, and for the flashcards as well, um, we'll set, be sending home, I'm not sure if I've jumped too far ahead here, um, sticker charts will be coming home, and they come home I would say, is it spring, summer time kind of, of yours? Kind of spring, again, dependent on the child's level of their yeah. body. But we don't want you to rush through those either. Um, and then we are going to start sending those soon. They are used as pre-reading books. So, And what we want the child to be able to do is as soon as you point, point it to the sound, they say it straight away. Because the longer it takes them, when they've got that reading book, if they're not recognising them quickly, they forget which ones they've already said. So it's got to be really quick recognition of those sounds before we move them on to a reading booth. Um, so we like them to be able to blend and segment very securely and to have a, a, quite a few of the... I would say if they've got those, then we can put them onto a reading yeah, book. We've had some lovely new reading books to match early, yeah. early phonics. They might they? be driving mm. you mad because they are quite repetitive. They are very repetitive. Um, but it's just to make sure that everything's fully embedded before we move on. Um, and we are asking that it's read three times as well. I know they're quick and you can get through them really quickly, but the idea of them is that the child sees that word and they know it straight away. They haven't got to segment it, they just know it. Um, and it brings in that fluency for reading then, uh, which is what we've got a massive focus on at the minute. Um, so I know we've already mentioned um, the slurry, so pronunciation is very important. Um, as we've already mentioned, there is a video of Mrs Jervis um, on the nursery class page. There's Oxford Owl as well, Jolly Phonics is what we use, um, that's what all the actions are. So if, you, if you're asking your child um, a sound and they're really referring to the actions, you might want to just have a look at the Jolly Phonics just so that you know. Um, else you could just be agreeing and it might be the wrong, the wrong action. Um, but they do really enjoy the Jolly Phonics. It reminds you a little bit of um, the Alphabet Land, isn't it? Where yes. they've all got a, a meaning to the sound. Um, but there are a lot, but just as Mrs. Becky did say, just make sure they're not American. So helping at home, a little and often. Um, pointing out sounds that they're working on. So if you're out and you know that in their sticker charts they're working on sat pin, pointing that out all the time so that they know that it carries a meaning and it's really important that they get to know those sounds. Um, 
and if I put that again, it must be very important to me, <laughs> um, ensure the correct pronunciation. Um, but the thing is with the leg, the duplos and things like that, the children aren't really aware that it is learning. So if you can tie it into their favourite game in any way, even if it is just, if they like My Little Ponies, just stick a little letter on there. Um, it will help them no end. It's just they need to see them as much as they can in all different environments as possible. There's things like that you can do at home as well, isn't there, where, you know, you say, um, I know it's not a CBC word, but to help with that blender said, hey, you say, can you go and get it in the morning when you get home? Can you go and get your oat? You know, and you, I know you sound silly doing it, but it really does. Yeah, it really helps. Doesn't it really help? Yeah, yeah. So as we've already mentioned, reading books are matched to phonics learning really closely now. Um, they are, we've designed a, a progression of reading books that has taken many, many hours. Um, and the progression of phonics as well, and, and it, it all triangulates. So whatever they're doing in their book, they'll be doing in school, and they'll be doing in phonics. So you know it will go in, um, and that's what just all literacy learning is matched to the phonics um, abilities. But don't think like if if your child is working at a lower level or or on track, don't think that they've just been grouped and that's where they will stay. They won't. It's very fluid. Uh, we do an input in the morning and wherever your child sits within that group that's the group that they will learn with that day so it's not we never cap the children they always just move between the groups where they need to go and um, they will obviously have a daily session of phonics uh, which just leads into our literacy session so that they can apply it really quick um, and our flashcards sometimes Mrs. Actually, Mrs. Oh, Duckett's modeling one right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our flashcards in there. So we constantly, you know, oh, flashy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, some of our lunchtime supervisors have them as well, and they know the children that they need to just keep showing the cards to. So it's all the time. Um, to one point last year, I went out with my video, and one of the kids went, S <laughs> <laughs> I've got my, my uh, flashcards out yet. Um, so loads and loads of apps. Um, Geraldine Phonics Land is 99p. There's Alpha Blocks, which is a lovely one. Mr. Thorne again. Um, we use a lot of our resources are off Twinkle. Um, yeah, you do have to pay for a subscri subscription, but there are some lovely resources on there. So I don't know if, if you've got a few friends just clubbed together and each share each other's login. That's what we do. I'm still using Mrs. Jervis's. Um, so stay away from apps that ask children to spell using capital letters and things like that. Um, we try to avoid the capital letter writing. I know I mentioned that last um, workshop, but it's really hard to undo. And we are introduced, when we do introduce a new sound, we are showing them the capital as well, because it will appear in their reading books. Um, but to write in a capital, um, which we try and really avoid that, it's hard to unpick. We do um, promote cursive handwriting, but the children are then given an option of non-cursive as well, if they're not quite there yet. So again, lots of online games. This PowerPoint will be on our class um, site, so if you want to grab the websites off there. Um, and there's some more websites there. But thank you for listening. All these activities will just be out on the table if you do want to just come and have a look, and then we will be around as well. We, we'll pop our masks back on. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for coming, and it, the video will go onto our class page as well. Thank you. <coughs>